Okay, Patrick Johnson, here we are again for another week analyzing the Canucks. We're going to be, uh, we're going to sort of break the rules. We're going to focus on a little bit of daily here only because it's <laughs> Halloween. So I wanted to <laughs> wish you happy Halloween. We're going to talk about broader issues that we'll cover the whole week, but largely because the Canucks faced the Devils and had a horror show last night. Explain to me uh, how you see the current condition of the Canucks. Well, first of all, it turned out to be very fitting. I mean, yet Wednesday, which is apparently in some places called Devil's Night, I I had never heard of Devil's Night. It's not a per, I, you know you grow up in BC and and I guess sometimes things are but it was literally something I never heard of until yesterday. And maybe it was because the New Jersey Devils were in town. Either way, it was very fitting since the Devils, of course, came in and ruined everyone's evening. If you are a fan of the local team, was, da was David Putty there? <laughs> he should have been. Yeah. yeah, he really should have been. Look at us dating ourselves. Yeah. Um, it was it was everything I think we had discussed last week about what we needed to see or need, still needed to see. The Canucks were finding success against some weaker opposition, um, and then they were you know they they we knew we we're going to face a couple strong teams this week in Carolina and New Jersey, and obviously they got a point against Carolina, um, but. The, the the sort of warning signs I think that even Coach Rick Tockett was waving about was worrying about and talking about um, in in um, in the aftermath of Monday's game against Carolina came home to roost on Wednesday. So would that be a hurricane warning, Patrick? It would be a hurricane warning ahead of Halloween. Um, you know that they that they that the the sort of focused play that they did bring to the table so well last year. Uh, has not been enough in evidence so far this season. And um, the the fact that, you know, when Quinn Hughes and Phil Pronick are off the ice, defensively, this is a group that's that's struggling. Um, that, you know, offensively, the likes of Jake DeBrusque are struggling. I mean, we talked lots about Elias Pettersson, but let's talk about Jake DeBrusque, who still hasn't scored a goal. Um, you know, there's there are just a lot of things going on that if you are in the, you know, watching the Vancouver Canucks, playing for the Vancouver Canucks, coaching the Vancouver Canucks, managing the Vancouver Canucks, there are a lot of things that you are very, buying very tickets concerned. for the Vancouver Canucks. Buying tickets for the Vancouver Canucks. But, there are a lot of things you're worried about right now. So, yeah, goal scoring, obviously, when you've got your big free agent signing has zero and your, yeah. you know, highest paid player has one. one. Um, that's an issue. But, also giving up six goals without reply on home ice is an issue is yeah. and we know thatcher damco injury is the issue for you more goaltending or more team defense oh it's i mean i'm on the whole it's team defense i think like that like th there were some really concerning things from she loves the first or was it three of the first four goals were scored score from almost exactly the same spot two of them were off the rush um it wasn't even long shots he was struggling with last night it was it was shots you know, on his blocker side, um, you know, coming off the blocker side, he just, there's a, there's sort of a distance judgment that he struggles with and he didn't get a lot of help a lot of the night. There is no denying that, but there were some moments where he had a chance to make a difference himself and he struggled and he's mostly struggled this season. Um, and it, like the we, things are sounding vaguely more promising about Demko uh, as a side note. I mean, enough people have sort of said, okay, you know, we're thinking next, you know, we'll start seeing him more and more in the next couple of weeks. I guess, like I, 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 you know, December seems to be the latest conclusion. I've talked to a couple of people that are like, yeah, I actually, someone said maybe January, but um, we'll see. But the 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 here and now is is that Kevin Lankin and, and Archer Shilovs are the team's goalies, and right now one of the goalies does not look good enough. And that, unfortunately, is the guy that got the loudest cheer in the pregame uh, pregame announcements. Like, people love Archer Shelovs. They want him to succeed. But he has struggled. And he has, you know, he's had three starts this year. And he hasn't had a lot of help, but he hasn't exactly helped himself. So, sure, there's a goaltending crisis. The bigger crisis in the end is defensively. And we saw that in spades on Wednesday night playing against a team that wanted to play a rush game, a team that concedes lots of chances themselves because of the style they play. You know, it wasn't just that the Canucks struggled to defend, that they got turned around too many times. Tyler Myers had a 
had one of his toughest nights in, in a very, very long time. A guy who had a pretty solid season last year. We have not seen him have as bad a night as he did on Wednesday night in a very, very long time. And he and that, that was a problem. Like they just didn't they didn't manage the puck well. They couldn't they couldn't defend well. Um, and then going the other way, they didn't generate anything themselves. And, you know, maybe it's tied together. It's that breakout thing. They always talk about the best sort of way to defend is to get control of the puck and how you make your chances up the ice is how, what you do with the puck down the ice. And, um, it, it just, it just was a whole bunch of bad, bad, bad. And that was a team that understood that post game, I guess, to their credit, they all understood. They're like, listen, we didn't play well enough. We need to figure out how we get back to the way we believe we can play. We showed we can play um, and they've got to practice on Friday and now they're playing, you know, they've got to, you know, they go to play the hapless San Jose Sharks on Saturday. That'll be helpful. But if they're going to make a real push here, I mean, you pick up the points in the games you can, but if they're going to make a real push here at all this season, they're going to have to start figuring out how to play games against tougher opposition. You know, it's funny. If you look at the Pacific division, <clears throat> obviously, we, you know, we look at the end of last season, we thought that the Oilers and Canucks would be there. It looked like Vegas was due for a big drop off. Obviously, Edmonton has their whole other set of problems. I mean, yes, more alarm bells should be ringing in Edmonton than in Vancouver, to be honest with you, because Canucks still sit third in the Pacific. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. is it? I mean, they're okay, so they're they play the fewest games, but they are tied with you know Seattle and Calgary with 11 mm-hmm. points. But is it too early to be? sounding alarm bells or you know it, it are you it's it's a long season but we are an eighth of yeah. the way into the season you you know there's hockey so full of cliches well points in october are worth the same as they are in, in april yeah but like i i have a hard time thinking should fans really be worried yet or not i mean they're not in a terrible situation no. in the standings they have time to work things out they have added new pieces yeah. it is a long season so i like Obviously, losing six nothing on home ice is not a good thing, but I'm, I have a hard time thinking that that we're really at freak out, out mode yet. Yet we place polls on our stories, and it seems that there's a certain amount of angst amongst the fans right now. Yeah, you know they're tied for thirteenth overall in the NHL with eleven points, right? Eleven points in or in nine games, which is you know that's an okay points points total, and and by uh, you know by points percentage they're 12th right like this is a team that was in the top five last year now some of that obviously was their incredible start where everything went right um but some of them was their strong play over the course of the season you know i i know i've mentioned this before but the truth is is that they were very consistent over the course of the year you broke the season up into 20 gang segments and they pretty much hit you know 25 26 points every section of the season and that's why they ended up where they did. Um, 11 points through nine games, you double that, and that gives you 22 points in 18 games, right? 24 points, perhaps, in 20 games. Like, that's still pretty good. That's almost a 100-point pace. So even even the way they're playing, they've struggled. Um, they're by no means falling out of it. The concern would be absolutely what you've talked about. It's just the details aren't there. That that if they really are going to go places and not just be kind of a middling playoff team, they need to fix their power play. They need to fix their defense. They need to get more consistent goaltending from not just Kevin Lankin. Um, they need Elias Patterson. I mean, Elias Patterson, funny enough, was one of the more effective Canucks against the Devils. Now the bow the bar is very low, but there was only one player that had more shot attempts than him last night. He took he got the puck on net eight times or he fired it towards the net eight times. Now, most empl- you know, sort of emblematic of how his struggles have gone was that puck he had on the power or that shot he had on the power play right at the end of uh, the second period. Or sorry, first period. Um, when when you know, with next to no time on the clock, he finds himself all by himself staring at Jacob Markstrom and he shot at Jacob Markstrom's chest, like the beer leaguer that I am and that he should not be. Uh and it was unusual because he has been picking the go- <coughs> pardon me he has been picking the corners you know you kind of go well that was not what you want him to do there and i said well that happens right like he will be as frustrated as anybody will be with that shot um and and he has been at least been picking his corners well 
The shot velocity is down. His skating velocity continues to be concerningly low. He's not covering the distances he used to cover. That was something that Rick Tockett mentioned yesterday, was that when he's on, he's skating, he's moving. And, you know, you go back two or three years, you can see it in the NHL edge data. This is a guy who's in the top, sort of top tier, top 10, 8, 9, 10% of the league of guys in terms of distance covered in a game. Now, we know from soccer that distance covered doesn't always necessarily means effective distance covered, but it is very clear that Elias Pettersson got around the ice and he did it a lot. And this year he is way down the list. He's in the bottom half of the league in terms of distance covered, in terms of top uh, top end skating speed, things like this. And, and that all adds up to a player that is not separating himself, is struggling to find gaps on defenders and get the pucks off. I uh, get shots off and, and that perhaps is true. Of the whole team, like the Canucks are generating shots. They're out shooting the opposition, but they're not dominating games in terms of shots. Um, they've been getting good goaltending. They've been shooting. Honestly, they've been shooting well enough. They're uh, they're, they're not, you know, you know, blowing the world apart, but you mentioned the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, the Edmonton Oilers for all the problems they're having, right. They've lost Connor McDavid for a couple of weeks. The truth is they're still shooting only 4% at even strength. Like, that is not going to last itself. Luck is going to play into this, and the Oilers are going to look fine all of a sudden because luck is going to come back their way. The Canucks can't even say they've been having bad luck or good luck. They've just been playing. They're very much in the middle of the situation right now. And and they just need – this is – they are not wrong. Like so often it's the cliches they need to bear down the details. Right now it's the absolute truth because they need to start finding a little bit more, a little bit more of an edge in every moment that they play. So one of the things that when you see a team has some playoff success, um, you're hoping that they're, you're building on that, right? And right. obviously Jim Rutherford's done a good job of building this team up from when he came in. Um, salary cap always does sort of put a bit of a restrictor on that. Right. I think I asked you this before the season. Is it your belief that the Vancouver Canucks are better now than they were last season? Well, I, I mean, I do think they're, I still think their forward core is better. I mean, first of all, look at the way Connor Garland's playing, right? Like the, he is a better player this year than he was last year. Like it's just, it's happening for him. And none of this is really a fluke. He has just got to play with more confidence, more gusto. I still think he should, they should keep going to this Pedersen, Hoaglander, Garland line. I think they're a perfect trio for each other, but Garland's been fantastic. Um, there's been some struggles with Niels Hoaglander. I, I think this is a current situation where Rick Tockett is trying to get his his wingers' attention a little bit again, rein him in a little bit. I think he has a has sort of a, a bit of a tempta- uh, 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 tendency to sort of wander a bit in his attention, forget about sort of what makes him highly effective and and how to keep being highly effective in the NHL. Um, the you know, Danton Heinen and Kiefer Sherwood, now that they're playing sort of third, fourth line minutes, which is really what they are, they're fantastic. Like, there are four checks that Sherwood's been fantastic. That is not something they had last year. Uh, Daniel Sprong seems to be finally finding his way. He's been a very interesting depth forward for them. Uh, and, you know, they just didn't have guys like that last year. And obviously, DeBrusque has been a huge disappointment so far. We just have not seen enough from him. But you still have to believe the talent is there. This is a guy that scored he scores goals like he is he, he has done plenty well in the league Lewis Pedersen obviously we just talked about JT Miller is clearly carrying I've heard at least as many three injuries I think it's I have something like his ankle his elbow and his back you know he's gutting it out but you could see just how he was laboring last night that this is a guy that's not feeling 100% I don't know how they fix that problem but but they you know that they need him to sort of get back to who he can be We've mentioned Pedersen. You know, Brock Besser's played well. He's put the puck in the net. But um, they've been, you know, they, they haven't been as consistent, clearly, as they want to be. Otherwise, they they would have a better record. I mean, you're going to lose some games. They have lost a couple of games in pretty spectacular fashion. They've won some pretty gritty games, to their credit. Um, they need to start winning some, getting some spectacular wins. Once we start seeing those spectacular wins, I think you have a better sense of where this team is going, and this is a team that's going the direction you want them to be. I'd argue Pittsburgh was pretty spectacular, but yeah, yeah just just was, under the sure. circumstance because there was that burst. But if I'm what I'm hearing from you is like sort of the back half of the roster is better than it was last year, and you just hope that Pedersen, <sighs> DeBrusque come around, Miller gets healthy, you get Demko back, yeah. you can see how you know to be a glass half full person, which we're frequently accused yeah. of not being. You can see how the top end of yes of yes the, the 
sky's the limit, so to speak, that once things trend the right way and things get going for those, and yeah. obviously that's not a given, that has to happen. But when that yeah. happens, it yeah. does seem like, okay, the outlook is pretty good for this team still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be the to be chicken little here a little bit, you still have to talk about the defense core, right? You know, they clearly need to add a defenseman. Eric Branstrom has been a lovely pickup, and I think he's going to stay. I don't. I think it's hard to see him leaving, getting out of this lineup. Derek Forbort is set to return. Um, you know, a, a Branstrom Forbort pairing is very intriguing. They still clearly want to find another defenseman. There is no doubt about that. Um, and and Carson Susie has just been an absolute wreck so far this season in a way that we did not expect, you know, it's the opposite of what he ended up being last year. I don't think anybody expected him to be quite as effective and quite as two way, uh, an influence as he was last. I mean, the guy got, did get some second power play unit time last year and not, it was not undeserved. Um, he has just not looked like the guy that we saw at all last year. He hasn't even looked like the guy that we saw in Minnesota, who was not known for being a terribly, you know, or was not known for being a defenseman other than being very tall and willing to get involved in stuff and be aggravating and, and physical, like not to actually have being actual tall and aggravating talent. sounds kind of like what people say about me. Yeah. You know, the Paul Chapman of defense. Well, it turned out he was more than Paul Chapman of defense. Um, you know, known for being tall. Like that's a new one. That's that's he was, he was the JJ Adams defense, you know, dynamic. Yeah positive, upbeat, kind, caring, but also very effective. Um, yeah, he, he, he was great last year and he just has not been. And, and so it's part of that overall problem that when Quinn Hughes and Phil Pronick are off the ice, the Canucks have just not been getting it done. And, uh, and that, you know, so to, to go back to your original question, which was, is this team better? Well, up front, they certainly are in goal. I think they are just because they've added Lankinen. Um, and, and, um the 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 reality is is that on the blue line they are i mean they're certainly not as good as they were at the end of the season when they had nikita zadorov um and ian cole even ian cole ian cole obviously had a terrible finish the season but like the replacement for ian cole is i guess Derek forward but you know we haven't seen that yet i mean i guess in his sort of dullness he has been fine forward's done some good things but de harnay is clearly a step down from zadorov um, he has not played well. Branstrom, you know, is playing well so far, but we'll see if he can keep it up. But but defensively, they or as a defense core, they still have a lot of work to do. You did mention, I, did, I want to touch on this before we go, you did mention um, power play particularly, but right. special teams in general. We know that that was, that was a big part of the story of why yeah. they, they didn't get past the Oilers. Um, you know, this is something that you would think, again, when you look at the pedigree of the players they have, there's no reason that it couldn't be one of the better ones in the league. But forget that. Just settle for average. Why isn't it clicking? Um, I mean, I... Like, is this on the coaches or is it on the players? Well, you know, it's interesting. So I'm writing about power play today. And people are perhaps reading this or have the story where this video is appearing. But, you know, it, with apologies, I'll reiterate. Uh, you know, the, the thing I talk off right at the top, I asked JT Miller, what's the difference between a good power and a, and a, ba- and a great power play? And he, he actually started, well, look, can we define good power play? And I said, well, I, I mean, at this point, they were still running at 20%. Um, they, you know, as of this video, their power play is sitting at 17.6%, which is actually way below where they've been over the five years with JT Miller. With JT Miller in the lineup, the Canucks power play has run at a very respectable 22.3%, which is ninth overall since 2019. That's pretty good. That's not stellar, but that's pretty good. And to get to the next level, so that was kind of the premise of why I was asking the question. You know, and I, he was willing to entertain that and, and basically said, it's not just how you gain the zone. It's what you do. I mean, it makes sense, but it's what you do next. How you get set up. How quickly do you get set up? How much are you, you know, how much confidence are you playing with? You know, part of his argument is we're just not, they're just not playing with any confidence. And and Rick Talk had touched on this a little bit last night when we asked him after the game. He said, you know, we're shooting when we should pass. and we're Passing when we're shoot, we should be shooting. And we're just in a complete mental mess because of this. Um you know, some is so is that on coaching? I mean, they made the choice not to bring in a specialist power play coach to basically go back and say, listen, these guys know how to play. There's a lot of thinking involved here. Um, can we just kind of you know feel our way through it? 
And I, th- I really think in hindsight, that was a poor choice. I think they should have found someone whose job was specifically to do that. You look at the way coaching staffs have grown in other sports. I mean, the Canucks have a large coaching staff to their credit. They built this out, but they do not have an experienced kind of specialist power play coach. I mean, obviously Rick Tockett has a lot of experience in this, the Sedins, no power play as well, but I think, I think they would have benefited from bringing in an outsider who looked at what they did and what they have and perhaps gave them a fresh perspective because right now they seem very, very stuck in what they've always done and they haven't been able to find their way out of it. Good stuff, Patrick. Let's just finish up your traditional, if anyone still does this, I don't think they do, uh, around 2011, like good old California road swing. Um, San Jose Saturday, followed by the Ducks on Tuesday and in L.A. to face the Kings next Thursday. Uh, Before, I will add, we won't include this in our our thoughts this week, but then we get that great Saturday night home game against the Oilers, first one of the year. But out of those three games, how do you think the Canucks are going to do? I mean, you know, it would be a lovely time of year to be in California, not going to lie. I think they beat the Sharks. I think they beat the Ducks. The Kings... The Kings are very interesting. I've said it. Before, I've said it a few times. I'm not convinced by their coaching staff. Certainly convinced by the talent. Uh, I think Rob Blake dug himself out of a good hole by getting rid of Pierre Luc Dubois just by subtracting his him from the lineup. Clearly, a player that I think uh, teams are more and more realizing just not worth the effort, um, despite the apparent talent um, and and sort of engine that he brings to it all. Um, I, I, I think they'll lose to the Kings. Uh, playing in playing at, at um, is it crypto? Is it still crypto.com? I think it is. I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Whatever that arena is called. It's not the fabulous LA. forum. Not the fabulous forum. Whatever the arena is called is uh, perhaps it's still called LA Live. Uh, you know, this incredible venue that uh, that uh, I only got to once. Um I did. I did read that the Clippers are leaving there to go back to the Fabulous Forum. So they want their own building. Well, they have their own building. Well, no. But how they've shared with the Lakers all over all the no, but years. The Clippers they, have their own building. It's just open. I, well, back at yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Back in the Forum site, they've got these oh, two. Sort of, yes. They've got yeah. They've got LA Live, and they've now got the old Inglewood Center Whatever. where the, yeah, yeah. the Rams oh, and Chargers yeah, play. Yes, like just yes, these yes, two yes. competing areas. Yes. Just because you mentioned yeah. LA yeah. Live. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. 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 Well, yeah. So anyway, it's just been a tough place. Always been a tough place for the Canucks to play. So I, I think they'll drop that game. So they're going to go two and one over the next week. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll be talking on that Thursday. Maybe we'll be talking next Friday. Yeah. Setting up a good game against the Oilers. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. It's not all doom and gloom. Uh, happy Halloween. <laughs> Hope you get lots of candy. You get lots of fun with your younger kids, obviously. To everyone out there, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading. Uh, Theprovince.com. Sign up for Canucks Report. You'll get everything delivered to you every week. And we will be back to you guys next week, uh, hopefully talking about a few wins.